more. But at first, Ubiquity CEO Richard Basil Jones and Think TV CEO Kim Portrait last week presented findings on returns on investment from the automotive sector's $700 million plus advertising annual spend. I'm pleased to say they both join us to tell us about the findings and how it was received by the automotive advertisers. Thank you both for your time. Um, $700 million plus, where does that put them in terms of sector weightings towards the amount of spend? Yeah, they're in, certainly in our top ten, that's for I sure. Uh, make no mistake about that. So the big brand, the big categories, they're FMCG, auto, finance uh, and the like. But, uh, yeah, automotive is one of the big ones. So, Richard, so tell us, so your role in this, you run a business that really tracks advertising spend in sectors on brands and you give that intelligence to your subscribers, right? Yeah. And so what you've done here then is deep dive into the auto sector and tracking... Uh, you got access to some brands' ad spend, yeah, and you were able to um, get a few findings. What were the sort of headlines out of that? Yeah, James. Yeah, the, the, we have another division in our in our uh, in our business which looks all about effectiveness of advertising. So not only do we monitor advertising, but we have a a large group of econometricians uh, who study the impact of advertising and, if you like, trying to look at the causal factors of what's driving sales. And so this study um, was all about that. Let's look at the automotive sector. Let's understand what's really driving sales and growth. And um, to your point, we, we had access to three years of data uh, for four key automotive brands. And that three years of data covers all sorts of inputs. Basically, as much information you can get from the clients as you can, which is not only all their advertising activity, but it's also their promotional activity. Um, as well as all the other factors that impact sales, and that's seasonality, um, it's economic, um, and it's also just all the activities from public relations and all other events. Yeah. Okay. Was it good news for TV in terms of <laughs> it being a powerful yeah. medium for well, them? The answer is yes, uh, very much right. so. The, the big answer <laughs> exactly. was, was great for advertising. I mean, what it showed, and really this was the bigger headline, was that advertising works. Okay. I know people always say, you know, yes, it works, yes, it works. But we've proven it works, and it's been proven in the past, but this for the auto sector was very clear in terms of new sales that are being driven and the contribution that advertising makes. Um, certainly from Think TV's point of view, um, the real headline for them was that TV was the major contributor. Very, very good news. And look, no shortage of car ads on TV these days <laughs> as well. Nice to know it works. It does work. And I think uh, what motivated us to pick the study up in the first instance, and, and we work at arm's length with Ubiquity, is that that's the number one question for brands, is how do I grow? Uh, and so in this instance, certainly all advertising was really powerful. Television was the most, which was nice. But uh, we're really happy that we can provide some kind of intelligence for advertisers and marketers to kind of grow their businesses. That's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. So I guess out of this came a suggestion that maybe the auto makers could be spending a little bit more on TV. It w would improve their sales. Now, I think you chose Melbourne because it's really the, the, the big auto um, makers, importers are based down there. Not everybody likes being told how they should be spending their money. How did they react to all this? It was really, it was very positive. So we launched in Melbourne last week for all the reasons you mentioned. And we've had really positive feedback since that. Um, both Ubiquity and Think TV have had fielded calls for the last couple of days, both from automotive advertisers, but also people outside the category asking if they could have a presentation, if they could participate in the next round of study. And I think that's important because what we're doing is changing the conversation and reminding people that there is a way to grow their business that they're already using if they invest in wisely. So it was, we, we've had very positive response. And from your perspective, Kim, how, how important is that to be able to quantify and solidify the, the um, positive impact of, um, of television in what is an increasingly competitive ad market? So I think if you go back, the community that we serve, marketers and agencies, are an incredibly cynical group, and rightly so, and there are lots of options in terms of where you invest your money. Um, I was a CMO for many years, and I think the key thing is empirical evidence that's collected independently using a client's own data is quite difficult to challenge because, you know, the facts are the facts. Yeah. So it is an important part of the process to make sure that you do have the evidence um, and that you can, you know, justify your claims. And you're right, it is competitive, but... Uh, television certainly was the most effective medium, twice as much as the next and then three times as much as the third. So, And plenty of headroom for, for those that are looking to grow their barons. Now, when you were chatting to people in the auto sector and saying, OK, I, I can spend more money and I'll, 
and I'll sell some more cars, um, better return on my investment. Where should they be taking money out of? If they're, if they're not increasing their marketing spend, who do you think they might be over-indexing? Yeah, well, look, I think the, the first and, and positive news for all the media that play in the auto sector is that there's a positive return on investment for all media. So in actual fact, pulling money out of any media type mm. actually will have an impact and a negative impact on sales. So that's the first point. So our message would be don't stop, don't stop investing in each of the media types. Having said that, if you look at the investment and return on investment curves, um, our answer would be the bigger upside and the bigger headroom is with TV. You're going to get a better return there. So if you are looking to spend more or reallocate, um, certainly we now have little models for each of the brands that participated to say, if you put an extra half a million in here or $100,000 or $1 million, what would it do to sales? And we can play what-if games now. And so for brands, individual brands, and actually down to models, you can play the game. OK, I've got 10 million in my budget. Here are all the media types that I play with. What is the right and appropriate mix? Can I ask, were you, someone who you know, lives and breathes this stuff and did the research, were you surprised at all by the, the clear lead? Uh, the clear lead, a little bit, yeah. It, the, the margin between TV and the next player, which is radio, uh, was larger than we've seen in other studies around the world. Um, but TV is always the lead, I've got to say that. Um, it, that, that is not a surprise to us at all. We undertook an FMCG, the packaged goods yeah. uh, area. It was more than just food. It was also uh, pharmacy and liquor in that as well in our first wave of this study. And same story, TV, the dominant contributor to, to growth and sales. Um, the margin between them was a little bit different. It wasn't mm. as clear-cut. Mm. Still twice bigger than the, the next one in line. And that was incredibly consistent with global studies. Unbelievably consistent. But the auto one, uh, TV was really a clear leader in this market. There's been a lot of controversy about digital ad spend and investment yeah. this year mm. for a number of factors. Yeah. A lot of um, non-digital people we have on the show saying, look, everybody's digital mad. They're, they're probably over-indexing in digital. What's your message there? Yeah, uh, You've look, got to be careful with your digital spend? You absolutely. Uh, absolutely. And I think the conversation, and, and I'm happy to say Ubiquity's been leading this for the last five years, is around transparency and accountability. And there is no question there's, there's greater transparency and accountability in some media than others. And digital's under the spotlight right now. And, um, you know, from our point of view, uh, if you look at the return on investment um, online, be it display or video, um, is at the lower end of the scale compared to traditional media. Um, so does it have a role to play? Absolutely. We also know in auto um, and through the study that TV and other media drives traffic to websites. And we also know that search and research in the automotive area is really important. It's really important. So when you're in that buying mode, getting on a site for a brand such as VW or Suzuki or whatever it might be is really important. Um, so it has a role to play. It's the proportion of the role it plays. Kim, we had you on the show, I think probably in your second or third day in the job that's almost right, that's last right. year after you joined. Yep. And we, we covered the sort of sort of the launch function almost you had later last year. That's right. Um, just tell us about now this is the first time all the free to air broadcasters and Foxtel, I think, have worked together as a one. What happens now? Because you've played a group role. Do you hand over some of this data to the individual networks and they take it up? What, how does it go from here? Well, we're fairly public and transparent with the data. So you're right, we are the United Nations of television, which is a great place to be. We publish information for advertisers or agencies readily available off our website. We also work with our network sales teams to brief them on the research that's coming. We probably give them a little bit more detail um, because obviously they're the ones you know, selling day to day and, and need that detail. So the information is, is readily available um, for anyone that's really interested in a public domain. And you know, if you've got a burning question and you're in the automotive category, certainly a call to us or a call to one of the shareholders will help. Yeah, and, and it's interesting too, the, uh, how long, if, if this has some impact, mm. how long do you think you might see some in the figures will show changing levels of ad spend for, for auto and TV, do you think? Well, I'd like to Is see... Is it a real long-term player? Could it happen quite soon? <clears throat> well, I think if you're a brand manager or a you know, marketing director or a CMO in this category looking at a growth target, we've given you some very clear indications on how you might accomplish that in a relatively short period of time, so within the quarter, within the half. So I would hope that, you know, armed with this kind of empirical independent evidence, that you'd have a go at moving some money around so that you could grow your business. 
You know, we, we, there was one element in the study too, which was uh, you know certainly you know interesting for me about the halo effect that uh, particular advertising has. So if I'm a brand, and I'm going to use VW for an example again, if I'm advertising, you know, uh, golf, VW golf, um, we saw that there was an if, a, a, an impact on uh, that particular model, not not. The, this is an example using VW Golf, but the direct impact was around 35%, but there's this halo effect of the other 65% yeah. influencing all the other models within that brand. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, if, if I'm a, an auto manufacturer and I'm thinking about my next launch, um, I'll, I'll also be thinking the impact that's going to have on my other brands and other models. You made mention that automotive, you've done FMCG in the past. Mm -hmm. Other sectors, other industries that you're looking to potentially sort of do this sort of analysis on? Yeah, I we imagine you'd hope so. Yeah, we've got. No, we are. Yeah. Absolutely are. Yeah, and yeah. we're working on those now. So, um, e commerce businesses. Uh -huh. So, online businesses is certainly one that mm. Ubiquity are working on, and uh, the finance category. So. Oh. Like the, financial services? Yeah, fin yes. and in its broader sense. So we should, um, we'll complete the suite, as we call it, uh, and present an industry-wide report um, in September at our annual conference. All right, well, unfortunately, we've run out of time. Big, big thank you to Kim Portrait. Thank you very much. And, of course, Richard Basil-Jones. Appreciate you both joining us today. My pleasure. We are off to a quick...